Like a phoenix rising out of the ashes, Legend of the Iron Fleet Express is reborn. Let's get after it. Welcome back, Legend of the Iron Fleet Express. Still operational, not folding, and not laying anybody off. Uh, I'm a one-man show, so I'm not firing myself. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it is super windy up here in Alaska. It is blowing around glacial silt, and my throat and nose are plugged and scratchy today. So if I cough, that's why. If I sniff, that's why. If I rub my nose, that is why. Um, but I wanted to get this out and, uh, on the interwebs, um, I've got a few points I want to bring up about what is developing with the AAF saga and also my opinion on why I think the XFL is going to work. Um, and we're going to start off with the AAF. So, uh, we are starting to see... Some of the things unfold with this story where on Tuesday, Tom Dundon was the bad guy. He was the the evil one. He was the Skeletor to the AAF He-Man. He was just the quintessential villain in the story of the AAF. As more things come to light, it's starting to look like um, Ebersol will become the bad guy uh, and that he was lying to people about a lot of stuff that had to do with the financial security of the AAF and the situation that was the... Um, the funding of the AAF. So I see a change, a shift in uh, blame coming, and I think that blame is going to be shifted onto the shoulders of Charlie Ebersol. Um, you've got players that are being kicked out of where they were living and essentially left homeless and stranded with no plan and nowhere to go. Then you also have... Um, the interview with Steve Spurrier after practice concluded for Orlando where he says, you know, it just sucks because we were lied to about what was going on with this league. They weren't lied to by Tom Dundon because he came in after the league already kicked off. Um, and this was basically the intellectual property, the idea behind the AAF was uh, Charlie Ebersol. So I have a feeling that Ebersol lied about a lot of things to a lot of people, and he's going to end up being the person held responsible for what happened here. So rest in peace, AAF. We hardly knew ye. I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people enjoyed it, um, but good news is we don't have to wait that much longer there's going to be more spring football coming up in a year from now and that's going to be the xfl so the xfl is coming back um and there are a few reasons why i think it's going to be successful this time around excuse me i gotta i gotta get something to drink here <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, I'm fancy. I drink, I drink that carbonated pure air water. I'm a fancy boy. So, anyway, um, reason number one why I believe that the XFL is going to be successful. There is no political agenda with this football franchise, with this football league um, at the moment. Uh, you don't have the Colin Kaepernick versus the owners. You don't have the the right versus left uh, political landscape that took over um, 
the kneeling during the anthem. You don't have that going on with this football league, which is a big benefit because that one started losing viewers for the NFL and two started making new viewers harder to come by because they didn't want to watch sports for that. Uh, they wanted to watch sports for sports. And that's what the XFL offers is football for the sake of football. <coughs> no special agenda. So that's one big thing. Number two, the rules that the XFL is going to implement are going to be slightly different than the rules that the NFL has. So the rules that are looked at that are making the league, the NFL, soft. Um, uh, some of those are not going to be there. Now, don't get me wrong. I think that some of the rules are put in place and they need to be there because player safety is paramount in any football game, whether it's peewee, high school, college, professional. If you don't keep your players safe, why should they play? Um, you're not going to have a product to put on the field because the product is the players. They're the ones that are going out there and performing. And if you don't have that because you're not keeping them safe, um, then shame on you. And that's not what the sport is about. Yes, the big hits are incredible. Uh, that's part of the reason it's fun to watch. But within reason, the helmet to helmet stuff, no. Um, the tackling by the face mask, no. The late hits, no. There, there's a right way to play this sport and a wrong way. Um, so there's some things that I think are ridiculous, like the sack rules or the roughing the passer rules that the NFL implemented this last season were outlandishly too, too extreme. Um, so they're not going to be there in the XFL. So people that like football for some of the more brutal aspects of football – they're going to come to the XFL because that aspect is still there. Um, the other thing is there. there's a lot of grumbling in the NFL community, the NFL fan bases for a change to the product that, you know, there's things that have changed that they don't like. Uh, they wish that there was another option to watch. And now there's going to be the First time McMahon tried the XFL, that wasn't the case. There, there was no market for it, and that's why it folded. People just weren't as interested because the, the NFL was just fine. There was no issues. There was no political issue. There was no uh, rule change issue. The NFL was the NFL, and it was the best, and <coughs> there was no need for anybody to go get football anywhere else. It was a fall sport, and when it was over, that was it. So uh, that's changed in the last 20 years. And, uh, yeah, people have already spoken that they will support spring football. Uh, the numbers for the AAF, yeah, they weren't amazing, but at the same time, the advertising wasn't that good. Um, McMahon knows how to advertise. He knows how to get the word out that something's – something's coming. He knows how to advertise things. Um, he knows he's taking his time to develop this, uh, to get the right coaches in the right areas, um, to develop a fan base before the first game even kicks off. So, uh, that didn't really happen. Honestly, I'm, I'm a big football guy and I didn't even know about the AAF until the week of the first game. And, I didn't even watch a game until week two. And once I started watching it, I kept watching it, but uh, McMahon's going to have this league up and running way better than the AAF was, which was rushed out of the gate. So, yeah, there's a market for it this time that there wasn't last time, and that's a big reason why it's going to be successful. One of the only things I don't really like – um, is the fact that almost every town that there is a team in 
or he has an NFL franchise. Um, I just, I don't like that because there's already a town or a, a team there, but at the same time, they have facilities, they have a fan base that will follow football. <coughs> and if the league does well enough in the first few years, I'd give it probably three years. By year four, if it's doing well and growing in popularity and making money, uh, I look for the league to expand. So um, then you'll probably be seeing teams in towns that don't have a team right now. Um, San Antonio, I mean, you could have three teams in Texas and you'd probably still have huge fan bases for all of them. San Diego, um, they would probably support an XFL team. Uh, I think Omaha, Nebraska would. Uh, I mean, Nebraska loves its football, not as much as Texas, but man, we love our football too. And yeah, I just, I really think that it will expand if it, if it keeps going and growing after three seasons. So, uh, yeah, that's really my take on how, why I think it's the XFL is going to be successful. And, uh, I will continue to upload content when more stuff is known about what's going on or the big story behind the AAF. But, uh, I will be changing, um, what's, what I'll be reporting on. So I'll be reporting on NCAA stuff and NFL stuff and XFL stuff. So thanks for tuning in. Have a good one and uh, catch you later.